Good evening. English soccer hooliganism broke out again in Dublin tonight, forcing the international between Ireland and England, billed as a friendly, to be abandoned. The violence broke out after Ireland went ahead with a goal midway through the first half. Fans in the English section of the crowd began hurling missiles onto the pitch and the people below them. The future of the European Championship finals, which are due to be played in England next year, could now be in doubt. What was supposed to be a friendly match was turned into a disgraceful platform for English thuggery soon after David Kelly scored to put Ireland 1-0 up after 25 minutes. As soon as the Irish cheers had subsided, chants of no surrender to the IRA could be heard coming from the English fans' enclosure, followed quickly by a hail of missiles onto the Republic supporters massed below them. A stadium designed for more placid rugby union enthusiasts, yielding a plentiful supply of breakable pieces of seats to be used as weapons. The Irish police had been warned by their English counterparts of the likely presence of up to 40 known troublemakers. In the event, there appear to have been many times more, and the Gardaí, unused to such behaviour, seemed slow to react. Inevitably, the Irish supporters spilled onto the pitch to escape the raining objects from above, forcing the players off the field. The most distressing sight, injured youngsters, nurtured on Ireland's warm-hearted enthusiasm for football, struck down by those intent purely on malevolence. Some 15 minutes later, the police took the decision to abandon the match. Those responsible sickeningly proud of their achievement, the defiant salutes seemingly confirming the presence of right-wing fanatics. For Ireland's manager Jack Charlton, hero of England's 1966 World Cup victory, it was all too much to bear. The reactions later were of shock and abhorrence. Uh, there are no words to describe that sort of behaviour. I wouldn't even try because I think it's uh, an appalling situation of which has disturbed everybody and I don't think it's done anyone any good at all. I mean, it's awful. I mean, I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I really don't want to talk about it because I'm so mixed up and I'm so sick of the whole business. It was a, it was a smashing game. And it's about football, isn't it? Not about... Well, I think we were hoping that this... The whole problem... nation is going to suffer because of two, 2,000 or whatever lunatics. But still the violence continued. The pictures flashing alarm around Europe with England due to host the European Championships next year. Their suitability to do so now surely in question. Uh, that question has got to be uh, asked and it's got to be answered, but I really, I really can't answer it at this moment. Um, I, I don't think that it necessarily has implications for it, but I understand you're asking it, and uh, it, it's a situation we will have to face. The cancer of hooliganism English football thought it had eradicated was clearly only lying dormant. Kevin Geary, BBC News. Well, joining me now from Westminster is the Home Secretary, Michael Howard. Mr Howard, another grim night for English football? A disgraceful night, and I hope that as many as possible of those responsible will be speedily brought to justice and dealt with very severely. Your department is uh, responsible for monitoring and trying to stop these people. Did you have any warning that this might happen? Well, I'm sure there'll be a full inquiry into what happened, uh, and we will make sure that any lessons that can be learned from it are learned. It's far too early to comment on the specific incident, except to say that this is quite disgraceful, and I hope that those responsible are brought to justice. Uh, are there any specific measures that you have in mind at this very early stage? It's far too early to say. It is extraordinarily difficult to take preventive action when you have a number of hooligans who are determined to cause trouble in this way. Uh, there are a number of things which we've tried to do in the past. They've had some success. We will obviously want to see if there are more things which we can do in future. But it is not possible to give a guarantee that incidents like this will not occur. It is an utter disgrace. The best possible antidote is for those responsible to be brought to justice. After tonight, do you think that England will uh, stage the European Championship finals next year, or, or indeed that they should? 
Well, I, I don't think it's sensible to get uh, involved in questions like that uh, when the incident, as I understand it, is actually still going on. What we have to do is to find out exactly what happened and do everything we can to try and make sure that it doesn't happen again, though there are difficulties in that, as I've just said. The Irish sports minister said tonight, how can people from Ireland and from other countries go to England and expect to be safe watching matches in the presence of people like those who are here tonight? He's got a point, hasn't he? Uh, I'm not going to uh, make comments uh, uh, of that kind. I think what happened tonight is disgraceful. Uh, that is uh, quite clear. There is no doubt about that. And those people responsible should be brought to justice. But other comments, uh, I don't think this is the time for. Home Secretary, thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll be with pickaxe handles, whips and batons trying to stop the buses getting through. The residents of Reitervecht were looking for a fight and this hapless tradesman drove right into it. It was a dress rehearsal for their attempts to turn back the busloads of black children from the township of Kailitsha. Their peace signs were in vain. We are sick of this man! We just want what we want! We are sick of this man! This is the first year of fully desegregated free education. Busing students isn't official policy, but with the massive demand for tuition, the local education committee decided to use the empty school in this white suburb. In Kailija, there were no, there were, the schools are blocked, big numbers of students, so this one is empty. So you want to get inside, but they say no. We don't know where are you going to do. Why don't they want you to get into the schools? It's because of apartheid. I think it's apartheid. Well, they, they said they don't want black, black men here. Though transferring the pupils without warning could be deemed provocative, the black children are not taking white places. This confrontation is all about race. In the commotion, one youth was stabbed to death, though the police now say they've no evidence that points to any of the local residents. Last night, the demonstrators tried to get into the school compound. They talk of community values, but it's the old language of apartheid that's to the fore. Leave us alone. Yeah. We don't interfere into black people's business rights. After last year's elections, the Africana anthem was retained as a gesture of reconciliation. But last night, it was sung for quite the opposite purpose. George Alagaya, BBC News, South Africa. The United